Welcome back again. We're just wrapping up on Diversely Geek discusses Lost in Space. Um, so we kind of wrapped up with the characters and with our social well, you influence. you didn't say your favorite character yet. So I, <laughs> I mean, well, she went into the whole family, so yeah, that... Yeah. I, I, I just kind of wanted to give that background because we hadn't touched on it. And I, and I said before that I think that I have a toss-up, but I really, really, really um, love John. And I did say that before, that I thought that here we are, both of us, you know, identifying through the, the, the strong uh, male characters. But I'll tell you why I think we did that is because I don't think I identify with them as male characters. I identify the with them as characters. Yep. And John is never portrayed as an overbearing machista. stereotypical machi- machista, whatever, yeah. <laughs> male. Um, and now there's Don. John is a man in turmoil, and the emotional turmoil is there from the moment he gets that phone call from Maureen, and you realize when that scene ends that everything about inside of him had to have changed. Until then you, you flash back to the beginning, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. And then we watch his emotional development, and the fact that he respects his family Mm -hmm. and their skills and their talent and their common sense to the extent that he will step back because he knows that's not a spot that he has a right to take from anyone that everyone has their that place is earned and theirs rightfully and the fact that he knows when to step back from this because you want you hear him wanting to say things that a father would say and a husband would say and he's like yeah okay Honestly, let me step back i know that i that this is not for me to be doing at this time i haven't earned that right yet and i would say yeah he definitely has that restraint in in, has in restraint in knowing that there's this distance that he has with has his family but i would say it's like it's funny i think we all kind of have these favorite characters um I mean, we, I think we all love, like, multiple characters, but we, we, we single out these characters. It's funny because um, they're not stereotyped. Maybe mm-hmm. it's because we're so... Uh, Jaded by other yeah, shows? I think we're just so in love with, with being able to see a character. That's so refreshing. Yeah. yeah. And so real and who we would love to have in our lives. Yes. Yeah, like that. Honestly, <laughs> uh, because I, I love, and I, like, I love all the female characters, honestly. Maureen, oh my so, god. I mean, come everything on now. about them is amazing. But I think, yeah, like it's refreshing to see this this, you know, Japanese character that's not stereo- yep. stereotyped. This, you know, um, Latino mechanic. mechanic that's Which in itself is a stereotype, but it works and it doesn't doesn't feed on those stereotypes. Yeah, and even in a way like where Sometimes I know that, that Latino um, characters can be seen as like the bad boys, like a stereotype in and of, in and of itself. He's he completely breaks that as well. Um, and then with John being like a, like a you know cis white guy um, and a father that has this distance with his with his family, mm-hmm. I feel like he doesn't fit any of those stereotypes that we always see. Yeah. Um, I think that his character arc is maybe the the main one because without his final connect to his family mm-hmm. everything doesn't really fit and click um mm-hmm. i think we see it in in the see that like you know that finite resolution with this th- this family resolve in the scene with with don and john um where don where um don has to cry um for something, and um, we get a little bit into his background, and uh, which is something that, in and of itself, makes me love him even more because, you know, yeah. <laughs> he has had a really rough life, and he does a lot of like, mm-hmm, like griftery things, but he has a heart of gold ultimately. Mm-hmm. Um, but with John, like, he's also military, or um, I think it was like the army. 
Corps? He was a no, he was Special Forces, I he think. He was Special Forces. Yeah, okay. I think he was what, Special Forces. It, what in our future would be Special Forces? Okay. Yeah, because they were like, oh, I can't disclose where I am. Tight, all that t- stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's all, right. we were, were just let it's to like understand it's all different. So yeah. And the thing is, we see, from the first episode, we see, actually, from the first episode, in the first uh, few minutes, we see the stark mm-hmm. contrast in where the family stands now, that's in its dichotomy, to... Where the family was, I'd say, what, like, five years ago? Was it maybe, like, three No, it's like ago? a year ago. Like a year ago. No, I, I think, I, I think it was at least three. A little, a little was more. it? Because yeah. it, was, it was the Christmas where the thing yeah, happened. Yeah, you're right, you're right, So you're I think right, it was, right. like, maybe three years at, at most, maybe? I don't know. We'll just say yeah. about three years. Um, but we see where there's this connection that the family has, and it's super um, loving and in complete contrast to what we see the opening scene to be. And that's something that over you know, the course of the show we, we see resolved with each character in between. We talked about this before. Like yep. You immediately see a connection with Will and Judy. Then you see the relationship with Judy and Penny. You see the relationship with Will and Penny. You see the relationship with Maureen and John to each of their kids and with each other. Yeah. And it's something that's ex- expressed and paced brilliantly again. But in that final scene... Um, with uh, in the last episode with Don and, and uh, John, uh, John discusses what he feels about his family, and it's a tearjerker. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, because you see this, this this pure love that this guy has for his family, and he's not saying it for anyone to to hear. He's saying it because that's just how he feels. Yeah, and. And that's wonderful. It, it's such a wonderful feeling and, seeing that a refreshing scene. And that, that, on that, the, the, the pureness of yeah. that love, that unconditional love, is what allows the next thing to happen. Um, yeah. So, um, that's amazing. I, I think something we didn't even touch on was the science. The science is so... I know it's not completely real because it is the future, so some things are going to be different. Science fiction. Exactly, yes, sci-fi. Yes, yes. But the thing is, the yeah, sci-fi... Yeah, but it gives us hope. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sci-fi done, again, real. Like, there's only... You can nitpick at things. But possibilities... Again, yeah. And um, I think we see... Because um, we haven't really talked about her. Um, honestly, favorite scientist of the show... Um, I think one of the reasons no one like we haven't really chose her as like a favorite character is because she's just it's perfect. like perfect and, like nothing that like you want that would be Maureen from her yeah. yes Maureen she is I mean perfect. she has her flaws and we see them but she has always owned up to them in her actions in her interactions yep. with John mm-hmm. um, as as she progresses when she realizes them then she owns up to it she's like oh okay yeah and I think we I had mentioned before like. Um, it takes a lot for me to get invested in like a, a straight white couple and the thing is I don't even see like I don't see that like label I don't see that boundary because they're just they're just so loving and so real and the scene where they they reconnect sort of um, after a tar pit incident um, yeah. <laughs> it's just I think it's just one of my favorite sequences honestly ever um, yeah because it shows I think just that joy and that human connection through, you know, perilous times. Um, but yeah, I think Maureen's a, a great way to synopsize the, really the series. Um, she mm-hmm. has, she's everything. Um, she's a mother, and I think ultimately that she is a mother first, mm-hmm. and a scientist second. But the way that she seamlessly integrates. Um, all of her personality um, into everything she does, like personality traits into everything she does, is something that the show does too. Um, yep. I think, in a way, it's funny. The show's kind of reflective of like the the show's just as um, has just as much much depth as a human would. Um, it's funny. Oh, you're so right. Yeah, and I think we had Complexity, mentioned. Complexity. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we mentioned that like you you when you're watching the show. You're not in anyone's point of view, but kind of yourself. Mm-hmm. And it, 
it's really easy to put yourself, you know, in in, in any of the situations. Yeah, uh, in, in this true. place, and I think that this is a show that will have an an impact um, mm-hmm. well into the future, yeah. and not just as a sci-fi show. I think just as a show. Um, I mean, yeah, it's on a streaming platform, but it's one of the best pieces of media in in generations it is an absolutely brilliant testament to our time and what we are capable of as 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 humans to put out there and i think it definitely raises the bar Mm -hmm. it's um yeah no uh just i was gonna say what are your final thoughts so you know my brain has been just streaming (laughs) through um the the visual and my thoughts are I've, I've said many um, social di- dichotomy, social infrastructures, um, the the relevance of of genomic philosophies of you know um, of emotional and psychological health and welfare. You know, it's it's just completely one. Um, Move, movable, actionable. I'm not sure how to explain it any better than the fact that all of them are moving like this. It's like a handshake. At any given time, they have to constantly be in sync to be able to shake hands. And yeah. the story, the cinematography, the acting, the um, the directing, the writing, they have to move so in synchronously in order for us to get something as genuinely beautiful and dynamically relevant as as what this show is and i agree it's there's it's set the bar i think you're right it's set the bar to a place that um i'm not even saying that it's difficult because you know there have mm-hmm. been um just as relevant pieces of work in our past that yeah. we love and oh, we yeah. adore definitely and i know it'll happen again i just agree with the fact that the the show itself has its is its own character. It's its yep. own being. It's its own entity. And um, where do you get that? How often do you get something that that that's where you are now sitting in the middle of this of this beautiful framework, and you feel as if you are embedded, and you are relevant, and that is what I feel it gives to us. Um, that and the visual. You know, we we talked about the visual dynamics, and for me, how important the scenery and the movement of scenery was in terms of me interpreting. And I told you that I I really felt that this was their genuinely subtle but very poignant way of highlighting environmentalism, climatology, climate change, and um giving us a perspective of whoa what can we do to be able to prevent these things from happening in our future the entire series is about that in the long run even though we haven't been given the specifics we know that we have to protect the earth right so either regardless of this that sits there it sits as an undercurrent right we know that um so here we are lost in space and all of these lessons and, and all of these emotions and all of these philosophies. Um, the most beautiful scene to me, I'll go back to it, which brings all of this together, is the scene where they're in the cave. And we are flash between four different um, situations, where the characters are in four different situations. And in those situations, they all are experiencing this beautiful, beautiful swirling en masse of of space jellyfish. Space jellyfish (laughs) um, that just arise naturally and just move from the earth up to the heavens and then dance and swirl in this brilliance. And we just feel the emotion of that. And then we watch as the robot looks at it and just realize that he's experiencing the same way 
that we are. And in that moment, all of us are experiencing it in the same way. All of us, everyone in the show, the robot, all of us were watching it. And I was like, wow. Every yeah. time I watch it, I realize like in that moment, anytime I'm watching it, that someone else is watching it, they're feeling the same. It's just coursing through their entire body that 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 pure love, you know, mm-hmm. or that pure energy. So um, for me, that says everything. That's awesome. Yeah, I do love that scene. Um, so, yeah. I mean, my, I guess, and I know we're closing up here. Uh, my other, I think my favorite visual scene is the, uh, the one with the, the flowers and <laughs> the clapping. Yep. Um, when you guys see it, you'll know what we're talking about. Uh, I don't yeah. want to spoil that at all. Nope. Not at all. That's a beautiful scene. It really is a beautiful scene. So. But thank you guys for having me on. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, you know, if you guys want to check us, check me out, uh, we do we do like movie reviews on Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, on Man Bites Film. My name is Gecko. And you know, I'm Nisha, I'm your geek mom, and we're from Diversely Geek. Thank you so much for taking part in and um, entertaining us as we launch our inaugural episode of the Diversely Geek Discusses. Yes, and uh, you can find um, Nisha here on um, Twitter at um... Nisha M. It's My Geek Universe. <laughs> yes, and I think the handle is at Nisayam. N i s a i r a m. We'll put that in the um, the uh, little section blurb below um and thank you yeah immensely this is a big undertaking and we couldn't be we couldn't be uh, more fortunate to have this amazing man here um to uh oh you're gonna us. make me blush now <laughs> uh, <laughs> on on this journey honestly um i can't video edit it's the ba- bane of my existence. <laughs> That's so. why we haven't gotten here to this point. But you know, everything comes in the time it's supposed to, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, thank you guys for joining us. Um, be on the lookout for more videos. We will be producing um, content regularly. And uh, if there is anything that you would like Diverse the Geek to dis- discuss, please make sure to uh, leave that book, TV show, series... Movie. musical yeah <laughs> a musical um album um honestly any anything that we can discuss that has um highlights with diversity and acceptance just drop that in the comments below and uh you know where to find us uh diversity geek on facebook twitter instagram tumblr. and tumblr and snapchat um we do frequent uh, cons, so if you're going to be at any conventions, uh, also leave that in the um, comment below, and we'll be sure to let you know if uh, we'll be there or not. And uh, definitely keep up with uh, our accounts. I would say subscribe, obviously, but also uh, set your notifications if you can, because it's not going to be super regularly yet but it's going to be out there and uh we couldn't be happier to have you on this journey with us so thank you